and as we can see here we have a green indicator which is telling us that charging is complete so we'll go ahead and disconnect the charger from the battery And let's take our multimeter once again and get a reading of what kind of voltage we have in this battery after it's fully charged. So we're looking at 13.82 volts. That is fantastic. So this battery is fully charged. Now we can start using it. And now we will hook up a power inverter. Today we're going to use the Top Bull 3000 watt power inverter. You can use whatever kind of power inverter you want. Let's go ahead and hook up the negative terminals. Right here. And before I connect the positive terminals, I usually like to tap them on the bolt because then you'll see that little spark that charges the capacitors in the power inverter. There's that little spark. Now that we have the spark out of the way, we can go ahead and connect the positives. So just like this, you should never see multiple sparks. It should just be that one spark. If you're ever seeing more than one spark, something is wrong. Let's make sure these connections are nice and tight, but don't over tighten them. Don't want to strip out the threads. So now at this point we have our power inverter ready to go. We can turn the switch on and get our power. At this point we are ready to start testing this battery. Now some of my favorite tests to conduct whenever I test a power inverter or a battery is things like these pressure cookers. I think that these are good tests because these are things that I would most likely be doing when I go out in the woods. So here we have this three quart pressure cooker. I'll just set a little bit of water in there. We'll get this lid on. Like so, make sure this is in the right position and hit pressure cook. 141 watts, 648 watts, and the battery is conducting this test just fine. We're going to take this a little bit further and let's introduce a second pressure cooker. This is going to be the six quart model, so a little bit larger. This would be nice because a test like this, you could be cooking maybe meat in the larger one and veggies in the smaller one or something like this. So this is a pretty good test. So as you can see the small one is pulling about 650 watts. Now the larger one, let's put some water in there so we can do a little bit of a test. Don't want to run the thing dry for the test since I'm not actually cooking. Put the lid on, make sure it's pressured and push pressure cook and just wait a few seconds right now we're drawing 650 watts and as soon as this other one kicks on it takes about a thousand watts so we're drawing 1568 right now 1568 watts 1570 so as you can see the battery has plenty of power to run both of these pressure cookers simultaneously. I'm filling these wires, making sure that they're not getting hot and they're not even warm. So as you can see the battery clearly passes this test 1566 watts. That is fantastic. Once these pressure cookers come up to pressure the cool thing is the wattage drops down and it doesn't consume hardly anything. So right now you can 
can see our battery voltage is 12 volts. We have 109 volts to these AC outlets. Uh, fan is running 39 degrees centigrade and we are pulling 1,559 watts currently out of this sine wave inverter. There is the battery uh, indicator that's telling us the amount of battery that we have. And let's take a look at these wires once again and just make sure that they're not getting hot to the touch. And everything is looking good. So we are clearly running this test and the battery is performing like a champion. So as we can see right now, both of these pressure cookers, you can see the timer has started, which means both of them have came up to pressure. We are not drawing any more wattage. The lights above me are dim because I'm going to be running another test and I need this orange extension cord. This orange extension cord is what was running the overhead lights. I'm going to go ahead and plug it into the inverter and behind the camera on the other end of the orange cord there is an AC unit. It's a window unit. We're going to go ahead and test that unit and see if we can get up. And here's a look at the AC unit that we want to run off the orange extension cord. Let's go ahead and plug it in and see if we can get this thing to run. There's low fan and there is low cool. So right now you can see that the window unit is running. Let's go take a look at the inverter, see what kind of wattage we're pulling. And as we can see, the battery is obviously carrying this load. So let's go take a look at the numbers. So here you can see we're drawing 379 watts. We are producing 109 volts on these outlets. 12.8 is the battery voltage and you can see the battery level indicator so clearly we are running that window AC unit with no problems at all in fact this is a pretty light test for a battery this nice this battery is handling that load no problem these wires aren't even warm they're cool to the touch so the amount of time that we could probably run this unit off of that battery would be about I'd say seven to eight hours we could run this window unit nice and cool off of that battery that is fantastic so a battery like this you can clearly see would be a good asset to an off-grid situation so now that the cooler has kicked on officially we're climbing in our wattage it went up to about 470 watts which is not bad at all still and the pressure cooker since this thing is up to pressure, let's go ahead and disconnect it and add that Makita battery charger. So we'll just kind of push that out of the way. Let's get the Makita battery charger in. Set that right there. We are pulling 469, 470 watts. As you can see, we have the green indicator telling us that we're ready to put on a battery for charging. Let's go ahead and put on the battery here. Now you can see the red indicator. So here we're running the AC window unit behind me as well as the battery charger. 593 watts we saw a second ago. 588 watts. This battery is almost fully charged. We have a red green. Green is just around the corner. And as you can see this battery easily runs all of these tasks with flying colors. Now as we can see here we have a green indicator telling us that our battery is fully charged. So that's a good test. Let's go ahead and disconnect the battery charger and I want to run another test. That is my little electric hot plate or cooker. This is also a good thing to use when you're out camping or if you were in an off-grid situation. So let's go ahead and turn this on. Let's go all the way to max and see what kind of numbers we're pulling. 1,399 watts, 1,400 watts. And let's put some water on there to boil. 1,397 watts. It's working very well. And the hot plate is starting to heat up. It's not red hot yet, but you can see the little indicator that's telling us that the hot plate is on. And here we can see we're pulling 1385 watts. As you can see we have a rolling boil on the water 
the cooktop is working fantastic the battery is working fantastic let's feel the wires they are not even warm they are room temperature at best so my final thoughts on this battery it's fantastic I was able to run the cooktop both pressure cookers the cooler behind me as well as the battery charger and these are all tasks that we can do off the grid in a camping situation off-grid situation if you had these types of appliances maybe on a boat or something like that this is a good battery folks look at all the stuff that I was able to do so if you're interested in this battery I will put a link in the description box down below. Please feel free to leave comments down below. Like this video, share this video, and until next time, folks, again, thank you for watching. I hope you guys have a beautiful day. We'll see you on the next one. Bye for now, everybody.